Episode 2, What Really Happened at Blue Rock Springs Park. In his 1986 book, Zodiac, Robert Gray Smith grossly distorts several key facts about the shooting of Darlene Farron and Mike Majo at Blue Rock Springs Park the night of July 4, 1969. Using the same police department reports and other evidence Graysmith says he used to write his book, we can reconstruct what actually happened the night of July 4, 1969 in the parking lot of Blue Rock Springs Park. Darlene picked up Mike at his house at about 11.30. Graysmith claims that after Darlene picked up Mike at his house, they were followed to the park by another car in hot pursuit. What actually happened was, Mike and Darlene drove first to Mr. Ed's, a drive-in restaurant and popular teen hangout near the interstate. They turned around in the parking lot of Mr. Ed's and headed for Blue Rock Springs Park on the east edge of town. They arrived at the park between 11.40 and 11.45. No mysterious stranger chased them to the park, but three cars filled with young people did follow them into the parking lot, maybe all the way from Mr. Ed's. According to both Mike Majo and another witness, George Bryant, who lived with his father in the caretaker's house, these kids set off some firecrackers and then quickly left the parking lot. At about 11.50, a fourth car arrived and parked a few feet behind Mike and Darlene. Mike was worried, but Darlene told him, don't worry about it. After a minute or so, this car left. About five minutes later, a fifth car arrived, or possibly the fourth car returned. This car also parked behind Darlene's car with its headlights on. Mike and Darlene thought it was an undercover cop in an unmarked police car. The driver of the other car got out, and shining a flashlight in Mike and Darlene's eyes, approached the passenger side of Darlene's car, where Mike was sitting. Mike originally told police the shooter tore open the passenger door and then started shooting. Graysmith claims that the shooting took place at 10 minutes past midnight, but according to seven witnesses, including Majo himself, the shooting actually took place no later than 11.55, the time when Graysmith claims Mike and Darlene were still being chased all over the east side of town. At least 10 shots were fired, possibly from two different guns. Both surviving victim Mike Majo and witness George Bryant told police that the shooter's car left the scene, gunning his engine and burning rubber on the pavement of Columbus Parkway. A minute or two before midnight, another vehicle arrived with three young people, Deborah, Roger, and Jerry. They were looking for a friend of theirs, but when they heard a scream, they decided to investigate Darlene's Corvair in the parking lot. They saw Mike outside the car, covered in blood, Mike asked them to call for help. After a minute or two, they drove to Jerry's house on Castlewood. The kids debated among themselves for a minute and then called Vallejo Police Department. At 12.10 a.m., operator Nancy Slover received their call and passed the information to the dispatcher. At 12.13, the first police car, with officers Mayring and Lindemann, stopped a gray Cadillac, which they noticed pulling out of the parking lot of Blue Rock Springs Park slowly and quietly. They were followed a minute later by Richard Hoffman, an undercover narcotics officer in an unmarked car. He recognized the driver of the gray Cadillac, 19-year-old Andy, who had gone to the park with a date. Hoffman stopped, notified Mayring and Lindemann that he recognized the boy, and asked them to detain Andy for further questioning. Captain Conway was the next officer to arrive. Hoffman immediately asked Conway to return to the traffic stop and ask Mayring and Lindemann to arrest Andy. More officers arrived. They requested an ambulance from Kaiser Hospital, and they also requested a fire truck be sent to the scene so they could use its lights to search for evidence. A fire truck was dispatched to the scene from the fire department station at the corner of Columbus Parkway and Ascot Parkway one mile west of Blue Rock Springs Park. The victims were taken by ambulance to Kaiser Hospital Emergency Receiving. Hoffman rode in the ambulance with the victims. At 12.38 a.m., Darlene Farron was pronounced dead on arrival at Kaiser Hospital, and Coroner Dan Horan was summoned to the hospital to take charge of the body. At about 12.40 a.m., Vallejo Police Department operator Nancy Slover received two more phone calls reporting the shooting of two kids at Blue Rock Springs Park. Now, why would Robert Graysmith lie about all of this? According to his Zodiac myth, the murder of Darlene Farron was never solved. But, according to the very police department files Robert Graysmith says he based his book on, Vallejo Police Department Detective Sergeant John Lynch, in charge of the case, did solve the murder of Darlene Farron in late July 1969.